Hey everybody, today we're going to take a look at this, the Coilmaster 521 tab, right here on my vaping place. Hey everybody, nice of you to join me today, thanks for coming. Well, before we get into talking about this, I want to talk, say a couple of words here. Everything that I'm going to be talking about here today is going to be totally for naught. If the FDA and the TPD are allowed to come into full fruition. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of people out there who are going to have an argument with me or might want to have an argument with me about the TPD. Well, just because Brexit was voted through doesn't mean that the TPD is not going to be happening, okay? If you listen to David Cameron's speech, he's not going to trigger Article 50 of the European Union's constitution. He's going to leave that up to the new prime minister, which is going to happen in August, September, something like that. I'm not, I don't remember the exact thing. I was pretty tired when I was listening to this to the recording of his speech. So he's not even going to do it. He's just going to continue as the prime minister until such time as his party appoints a new leader. And then he's going to dump this whole mess into their lap and say, nah, you go deal with it. I'm not. And then he'll march off into the sunset looking like, well, in his mind at least, another Churchill. What can I tell you? But that still means that the TPD is going to be taking effect and all that nasty stuff that's going to happen in, I think it's November-ish, and then all the nasty stuff that's going to happen in next April, if I remember correctly, I might be wrong, that's still going to happen. You still need to work with your MPs to get the TPD repealed in England. You still need to work with your MEPs to get the TPD at least modified, if not destroyed, for the rest of the vapors over in Europe. England, while you're still in the EU, before they start to actually trigger all of the nasty stuff that's going to be coming down the pike for the, that's going to happen for the next year or two, while you get your laws and everything else straightened out and back to where it should be for a sovereign nation, you still need to help your fellow vapors in Europe. You need to work with them. You need to try and help them to survive, at least until either they can get the TPD repealed, modified, or they can see about getting themselves the hell out of the EU and totally bring it down around the ears of all of those Eurocrats who just want to turn around and want to have control over everybody without having to stand for an election. Yeah. Okay, so enough of that. You guys in the States, you need to be getting on to your local congressional representative. You need to be getting on to your, your federal senators. You need to be telling them to support H.R. 2058, the Cole Bishop Amendment to the agricultural bill. We need to get those things passed. We have to get those things passed. If we don't, in August 8th, the TP, excuse me, the FDA regulations are going to cut in and they are going to kill vaping here in America as surely as a 45 slug to the skull will. Okay? Enough of that. So, without any further ado, we're going to go down to the build deck. We're going to take a look at this 521 tab in all of its glory. I know it's, a lot of people have already done reviews on it. Just about everybody has done a review on it. But this is my little gush fest, okay? Since I've got this thing in about two, three weeks ago, I have absolutely been loving it. As I say in there, I have been using a tenderfoot build stand like this. Excuse all the stuff that's in here. I use it for just about everything, keeping track of everything. But this little 10 foot build stand has been my main build stand. This and whatever mod I happen to have for a while. I did have an outside ohm meter that I was using to check things, you know, regular 510 screw in ohm meter. But 
well, that was big piece of crap, and, well, let's not get into it. That's a whole different story. It was held together with hot glue. Yeah, not good. But if you're going to do any kind of building, if you're going to be doing any kind of rebuilding, if you're going to be rebuilding stock coil heads, if you're going to be doing anything, anything with coils, you need to have one of these things, seriously, or at least something similar to it, okay? Let's go on down to the build deck and let's take a look and then we'll come back up and we'll have a little bit more of a discussion on this matter, okay? See you down below decks. All right, here we are down on the build deck. We're going to be taking a look here at the Coilmaster 521 tab. Uh, this came to me free for the purposes of review from directly from Coilmaster. Thank you, Joker. This is the way it comes in the package. Of course, it has a cellophane wrapping on there. No, I did not wait to take the cellophane wrapping off so you could see me taking the cellophane wrapping off. No, I had to play with this darn thing in order to turn around and see how it, well it works and to be able to talk to you folks about it. So, hey, you, gotta, you can't have everything, you know. Can't have your cake and eat it too. All right, so this is the box that it comes in. As you can see right here on the top, it has a royal raised coil master on here. On the sides, you have 521 tab coil master, coil up be a mass to be master uh this side nothing this side same exact thing this side nothing on the back you have a small description of the item itself along with a very nice picture of it ohm meter it comes with a voltage meter for mech and uh, regulated mods it has the coil building deck here. Uh, you can use it for coil burning. You can use it as a table mod. So if you wind up having a situation where all of your mods are dead and the only thing you've got left around is this, well, guess what? You can make use of it. This does have reverse battery protection. So if you put in a battery in here and you happen to forget yourself and put it in backwards, no, you won't fry the meter. All right, specifications on this meter are resistance measuring range from 0 0.01 ohms all the way up to 9.9 .9 ohms. Voltage measuring range is 0 0.3 to 9.9 .9 volts. Now, here it says resistance rate. Now, I don't understand what they're saying here. What I think they're trying to say here is that the internal resistance on this is 0.2 ohms. So that means whatever your reading is, it's going to be, it can be plus or minus two ohm, 0.2 ohms. I'm not sure, okay? But that's what I kind of figure it's supposed to be trying to say. Um, it would be nicer to say internal resistance X, so you can figure that in. If you're getting a reading of 0 0.15 ohms and you have a 0.2 ohm internal resistance, Mmm, that could make a major difference, major difference in how you're building the coil. So, yeah, that I would like to see a little bit more clarification on. Connection, 510 threaded with a spring-loaded pin. Yes, this is spring-loaded, and it works very nicely with all of the atomizers that I've been putting on there, including my Kanger mini, ta uh, mini tank that I have up here that it has a nice long 510 connector on there that sits well above the deck on just about everything that I own. Charging. Yes, you can charge your five your um your 18650 in here if you absolutely need to. Uh just simply by plugging in the micro USB charging cable, you're going to need a charger that will supply 4.5 volts at 750 milliamps or three quarters of an amp. So any one of your standard uh, cell phone chargers that, that charge at up to one amp should be able to supply sufficient enough voltage and current for this to charge the battery that you put in here. It also requires one 18650 lithium ion battery 
3.7 volts, and of course, it's not included. Here we have the coilmaster.net website. The usual, you know, European Union CE mark. No lead in this, uh, in the circuitry that's in here at all. Thus, the ROHS uh, check mark. Recyclable, and of course, don't bin it. This QR code will take you directly here to the coilmaster.net website. And of course, since even Chinese companies are being cloned by other Chinese companies, you have your scratch and check authenticity code with the serial number on here. Okay, so let's take a look and see what we've got in here. Now, when you first open the box, this is what you're presented with. The manual for the Coilmaster. It comes out as a... I think this would be considered an A4 piece of paper uh, over on the other side of the pond. Shows you the layout of how everything is set up here. Introducing shows you, gives you a brief description of the um, the capabilities of the unit. The specifications here, notes, special notes. Do not disassemble and remodel. So yeah. They're trying to tell you don't try to don't try to customize this thing. Basically, don't use excessive force to do atomizing mounts. So in other words, don't try don't horse your atomizer down onto this thing. Just spin it into place nice and lightly until it's just finger tight. Use make sure you use 3.7 volt 18650 rechargeable lithium ion battery. When not in use, please turn off the power. Yeah, otherwise you're going to have a one heck of a dead battery. And use only fully charged batteries. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So put that to one side. Then you have your, they have a little giveaway thing here. I haven't checked this out yet, but nice. All right, so here we have the 5 to one tab. Now... When you look at this on camera, it looks freaking huge, all right? Let's just take a look and see exactly how big this puppy is. So, from the base here to the top of the build deck, we're looking at 49.1, yeah, 49.1 millimeters tall. You're looking at eighty four eighty four point five point six point seven five yeah eighty eighty nine point seven five millimeters that way and wide you're looking at 70.16 millimeters wide. So, yeah. It's actually a pretty small little item. You know, when you watch these, you look at people using these things in the videos, and you look at it, and you see it there. I mean, it looks huge, right? Looks bloody huge. But it's not. It's actually a very nice little sized unit. And I was very much surprised. Very much surprised. Very pleasantly surprised at that. Okay, on the unit here, you have your 510 connector. And yes, it is spring-loaded. It's a very, very gentle spring, but it's enough to definitely make a good contact. And this is a deep 510 connector. I mean... This thing is really deep. Uh, let's see just how far of a throw this actually has on here. So I'm going to put this on here, and we're going to push this down until it stops. And you're looking at 4.1.2, a 4.3 millimeter deep 510 connector. So that should take just about anything that you got out there. You have two voltage connectors here. I'll show you more about what those are in a few minutes. You have your fire button here. 
You have a little blue light that pops up over here that tells you that you're actually firing. This is your LED screen. Now, this comes with a little plastic uh, tab on here that you peel off to protect the to protect the clear plastic while it's in transit. Um, yeah, peel that off. You're not going to be able to see diddly unless you do. Right here on the right-hand side to the build deck, you have your switch. The left position is your burn position, center is the off position, and the right hand or toward the top of the uh, unit is the meter position. Meter is one, burn is two. As you can hear, that's a pretty clicky button. So, on the bottom, you have the resistance measuring range, the voltage measuring range, resistance rate. Yet again, they say resistance rate. Um, it doesn't tell you what the internal resistance of this unit is. All the same stuff that was on the, the back of the unit, on the back of the box here. Exactly the same thing, including the applicable regulatory garbage. Now, notice you have four little rubber feet. Now, this is a major improvement from the, um, the first version that they had out that only had little plastic feet on it and was like sliding all over the place. So, yeah, kudos to that for, for doing that. Now, on your take off the back plate, you'll notice you have four st uh, pretty powerful little magnets on here. You see how powerful they are. They actually will lift the unit right up off the table. Now, the difference between this one and its two predecessors, this is the version 3, okay? The version 1 didn't have these two little nubbins on here, okay? So the back could go on any which way and could easily come off while you were working on stuff. The version 2 only had one of these nubbins and it was in a different position. So if you have a version 2, you can't use the version 3 backplate on the version 2 or vice versa, okay? Just bear that in mind. You have a ribbon here to help you extricate your 18650. Plus, connector is to the left-hand side when you're looking at it with the, um, with the writing here correctly. Negative side is over here. All right, and that these four magnets correspond to the four magnets that are on the back cover here. All right, so let's pop in an 18650 in here and see what we can see. I'm going to be using an LG HG2. This is fully charged. So we're going to pop this in here, fold over the ribbon. Make sure you line up your, your two little nubbins here. I usually just like kind of push this into place like so, and this way the ribbon is nice and down. Now... Before I start going into showing you how this thing looks and everything else, I'm sure you noticed there is a little box in here, and underneath that box you have this. And this is your voltage checker, okay? You have two little banana clips on here. That corresponds with these two holes here. So as you can see, it fits in there just like that. And as you push it down, it goes in, makes contact, and covers the fire switch, okay? So what you're going to do is you put this on here, all right? Now, you have an atomizer that you want to see exactly what the full resistance range, the, the full resistance rate is for your atomizer and your battery. You want, In other words, you want to find out what the you know, the total resistance of the packages. All right. Put that on there. Take that off. Ooh, juicy. Yes. Aromamizer VRDA. Um, this is going to be coming up for review in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and yes, you are seeing correctly, I did put a vertical build on here. Um, 
I turned around and put up a small little um, video of me playing around uh, last weekend while I actually had a chance to breathe, um, playing around putting this thing together. Uh, that is the 24 gauge uh, Canthal that comes in the DIY kit. Excuse me. And the cotton is, of course, just plain old Muji. This is the juice that's in here is one of my DIY juices um, that I do. But yeah, you put that in there like that, and you would connect a battery. You can can use a standard stick battery like this. Plug this in here, like so. And once you have that connected, like that, you could turn that to fire. There we go. All right. 0.84 ohms, it's saying. That's the total resistance of the circuitry from here to the coil. So you press down on this, make sure it's held down in place, and then you press the fire button. And it tells you that the voltage on the battery drops down to 2.52 volts when it's actually firing. All right. So, yeah, that's your voltage checker to check batteries here. Um, this box. This is a good idea. Joker, this is a very good idea. However, the execution didn't come off exactly right. Okay? I think you need to work on the execution a little bit here. All right. Now, this comes, has a um, small, very small, I forgot to put it in here, um, USB cable. Uh, I don't know where it went here. Duh. Sorry about that. The USB cable is only about this long. Just about as long as these are. I'll show you what these are in a minute. Um, yeah, it's about this long. Not very useful. If you're going to throw in a USB cable, throw in a full-size, like, three-foot or one-meter USB cable so people can plug it into the wall and then plug it into the uh, micro-USB port here um, to charge up the battery. That would be a good thing. That little dinky cable that, you, that this thing comes with? Mm, no. Absolutely not. <clears throat> now, as for these, all right, let me move this stuff out of the way here. I need a little bit of room here to show you what I'm going to be talking about in a minute here. Now, this being an ohms reader, if you put it into this position here, I'm going to take this out of the equation, like so. Put the cap back on here so that way it doesn't go leaking all over the place. Now, as you can see, this is reading dashes across the board. Sorry. Got e juice on here from when I was firing that before, and it clouding up the display. Now, as you can see, when there's nothing on here, this is not supposed to show anything. Zero, nada, zilch, zip for a resistance rating. When you plug these in, like so. Good so far. No resistance. Now, when you put the two of these leads together on any ohm meter, you should get 0, 0.00. Let's see what we get here. Oh, looky that. 3 point... No, 
0.12, 0 0.16, 0.4, 0.6. Hmm. Gee, that's also bouncing around quite a bit. Hmm. Quite a bit of funky stuff going here. Those leads, first off, should be saying 0, 0.0 on here. But not only is it not saying 0, 0.0, but the it's bouncing around. Let's take a little closer look on this. All right. Let's pull out my little ohm meter here and see what we got. Now, this is, as you can see, this is set to auto ranging. So we're going to take this and we're going to put this onto here like this. And then we're going to take the other clip and check to see what the resistance level is here. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Let's try that. Okay. 0.1 ohms. Hmm. That should constantly say zero. It should not say anything other than 0, 0.0. So that's a possibility that that's causing an issue. Let's take a look at this other lead now. Let's see what this one says. Ah, look at this. 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0.1, 1 point... Whoa, look at that baby. That went up to like 12 ohms there. Wow. What's with this? Mm-hmm. That's... Wow, it actually went up to K ohms that time. Yeah. This has got some issues. It's not making a good connection in here some for some reason. Now, I'm not going to open... I can't open this up, so I can't see what's going on in there. But this thing's not making a good, a good connection. If you're going to be using this to check the, check the actual homage on a coil outside of an atomizer, which is what this is designed to do, um, yeah, it's going to be totally screwed up. Okay. Um, like I said, good idea. Very good idea. I really like this idea a lot. But the execution? Eh. Not to mention the fact. Let's take a look at these clips. Copper clips. Very nice. Good soldering joint there. However, as you can see, you may be able to see, There are no teeth on that clip. This is the kind of clip that you would use for clipping onto a component on a printed circuit board. Okay? Um, this is not what you would make use of for a squirrely, squirmy little piece of wire that wants to do nothing more than get away out of your hands and go flying back to its mother coil. Okay? Not a good idea. Now, you don't need to use something, clips that are as big as this. You can use something that small, but definitely make sure it's got teeth on it. Okay? Make sure you got teeth on the clip. Okay? If anybody wants to, when they if they get one of this thing, one of these things, find a Radio Shack or something similar, get a pair of regular banana clips, banana leads that you can use from any VOM, digital voltmeter. They work fine. Absolutely, positively, a thousand times better than this, and this is what it should say. Okay, saying 0.1 ohms. But you notice, 
it's not going around. That is the internal resistance of this unit. Okay, all electronic circuitry has a resistance. It comes right from the very wire and the, the, the soldering and everything else. So whenever you're going to be using an ohmmeter to check out what your, your coil is, do this first. Plug in a wire, short it out, and see what it says. Then, when you plug in your coil on here, that 0.1 ohms that this shows, or 0.11 ohms in this case here, as it shows right now, you subtract that from the reading that this gives you. Now, I got a coil here that I just made up for a few minutes ago. Yeah, I'm actually recording like two shows at one time here. So, um, this here is showing a resistance on this coil of 0.81 ohms. Now, since this has an internal resistance of 1.1 ohms, 8.1 minus 1.1, 0.7 ohms. Let's just verify that over here with my DVM. Now my DVM, yeah, there we go, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Yeah, this thing doesn't like working down this low. It doesn't like working down below one ohm, but it will may will read it. But it's bouncing around right around 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, right in that range. So yeah, 0 0.7 ohms, 0 0.7 ohm coil. Okay, so whenever you get a meter, if you can plug in a pair of leads or just a piece of wire put an atomizer on there put a piece of copper wire between the two positive and negative terminal put it onto it turn on your meter find out what that reading says if it says anything other than 0, 0.0 you have to make note of that and put it down so that way when you plug your coil into your atomizer and you come up with that reading, if that reading says, like this said here, 8.1 ohms, 0.81 ohms, you take the 1.1 ohms away, 0.7 ohms. That's what, your, that's what your coil is actually at. Okay? So, yeah. That's your 521 tab. Coilmaster 521 tab ohm reader burn, uh, coil burner. I really like this. Even though the it has a 0.11 ohm variance on this thing, it's something I can live with. I just have to remember to subtract the 0.11 ohm the 0.11 ohms from whatever is showing up on the thing. Um this is very nice. I have been using this as my build stand ever since I started building. Okay? This is a tender foot build stand. All right? While this is absolutely beautiful and it will never, ever, ever get sold, it is a one of a kind. He only made one of these, this style of build stand. Um... This cannot do what this does. This can hold it and allow me to make my screws and everything else, put it into place. Holds the Addy perfectly, just like this does. But this can give me the resistance readings, which I have to take this off of the tenderfoot stand, put it on a mod, 
to find out what the resistance is. Not all mods will give you a proper resistance level, a real resistance level. If you're building coils for your atomizer and you're building them below 0 0.2, 0 0.3 ohms, you need to have one of these things because you're in dangerous territory there. Point, below 0.2 ohms, roughly 0.2 ohms, you're setting up your battery to become a hand grenade. Okay? You press that fire button, and if you have an, a coil in your dripper, in your tank, you think that that's you think and you have done the math that you think that that's supposed to be a 0.2 ohm coil and that that works with your battery just fine and this is most especially important if you're working with mech mods okay and you actually have either a short in here or if you have a 0.05 ohm coil or a 0.1 ohm coil that battery is going to be looking at what is for all intents and purposes a dead short it's going to get very very hot both externally and internally and the next thing you know you're going to have a venting battery sitting on your hands okay you need, need to make sure that whenever you're building anything, even one point something ohms, make sure you're using a good ohm reader to check the resistance of your coil. Okay? And most especially... If you're part of the sub-ohm crowd and you're down low, okay, make sure you have an ohm reader separate from your mod. Cheap, inexpensive, double-A or triple-A batteried ohm meter will save you from a world of hurt. Okay? I've heard of and talked to a couple of people who got really badly hurt when their battery started to vent because they didn't check it. They were building a coil and they thought everything was fine. They slapped it onto their mod and the coil was shorting out to the housing of the Addy. Next thing you know, their battery was venting, and next thing you know, they were ha dealing with second and third degree burns. Okay? Happens. Use an ohm meter. They're cheap enough, and they'll save you a lot of time and a lot of ha hassle, a lot of hurt. I'm not going to say any more on this. I've said enough. Okay? Well, that is your 521 tab from Coilmaster. Nice little unit. It's got its like any other piece of electronics, it's got its it's got its little bugaboos. You just have to learn to work with them. But this is definitely going to be taking a very prominent place on my build shelf from now on. So, yeah. Thanks, Joker. Appreciate it. All right, let's get back up topside and uh, we'll talk some more about this, okay? See you up topside. Bye. Hey, everybody, welcome back topside. Yeah, 521 tab. This little baby is a godsend. And yes, while you don't need to actually have one of these things, you can get away with doing things the old-fashioned, cheap and dirty way of using the ohm meter in your mod, using a build stand like this, or even just using... Oops, what the heck happened? What fell off of there? 
Oh, well, I'll find it later on. I'll either step on it or something else. I don't know. But, yeah, you can turn around. You can get away with it the old-fashioned way of building it right here on your top of your mod using a build stand to hold it in place while you're doing the work on it and then take it off and put it onto your mod to check your resistance levels and everything else. But it's a pain in the ass. Seriously, it is a pain in the ass. I have been doing that now for about the last year. I have been wanting to get one of these things, but I've never gotten around to it. One bill or another bill or anything else has gotten in the way. And I couldn't turn around. I couldn't justify in my own mind going out and spending the money for this, something like this, just because I had other bills and everything else that needed to get paid, needed to get taken care of. Well, I'm here to tell you, since I've gotten this thing, my life working with my mods, recoiling things, even re-wicking your RTAs and your RDAs, a whole hell of a lot easier. Life has become a whole hell of a lot easier. I have one, well, I shouldn't say I have. I have one tank, but a couple of months ago, I was using a juice. I really like that juice but it was a coil gunker. Pretty much after about 48 hours, I would have to actually go in there and re-wick the entire thing, burn the coils off just to get stuff off. It had so much ethyl maltol in there and other stuff that it just, it just turned around and it just gunked the coils up no end, period, end of quotation. And every 48 hours, I'd be sitting there sucking on my mod and going, oh hell. I got to actually go in here and, and re-wick this thing again. Yeah, it was a pain in the ass. I actually started dreading going in there and re-wicking. Well, since I've started using this little baby, and yeah, just give you an idea how big it is. Okay? It's just about as tall as the, the E-Leaf 200. It's a little wider. Actually, pretty much about the same size, maybe just a tad wider. And just about as thick, except for the build deck part here. The body of it is... Let's see if we can get that edge on. Yeah, there you go. Pretty much the same size. So this is pretty much a small little item. This isn't as big as I thought it was. I was really shocked when I saw the size of it. I thought it was going to be actually like about... A third again is large, but it isn't. It's easy to use. It makes your life so much more easier, so much better when you're trying to work with your coils. It puts everything you have to do in one place. You just put that on your desk, put your 510 connect, uh, screw your, the base of your unit in there into the 510 connector, and you just do what you need to do. It is convenience personified, which pretty much is what I've gathered and actually heard via email directly from Joker at Coilmaster's mouth, shall we say. Um, yeah, that's their motto. That's, that's the driving force behind Coilmaster, to make life easier, to take some of the drudgery of working on your atomizers, your RTAs, your RDAs, your RBDs, your RDTAs, and all the rest of the vegetable soup that they've been, they've been coming out with lately. Make it easier so you can play with different coil combinations. You can play with different types of coils. Make it easier for you to replace a coil and slap in a different coil just to see how that's going to work and to be able to help to fine tune your vaping experience. That's what they do. Now, the Seb that they have, they went out and they spoke with the same people who put out the Flavorist. They cut a deal with them. The company that makes the Flavorist also makes the Seb. And they laser engraved Coilmaster's name on there. It's made by the same company. They just went out and got something a whole hell of a lot better. Okay? So, yeah. If you're new to rebuilding and you don't have one of these things... If you can afford to go out and get one right away, get one. It'll make your life a lot easier. If you're new to rebuilding and you can't afford to get one right away, put your pennies aside, cut it down a little bit on lunch, probably a little more than what you've already done. Put it aside to get yourself one of these. If you're not new to coiling and you have 
one of those little square boxy ohm meters? Well, they're good. They'll do the job for you, but they won't fire it like this well. Get yourself one of these things. You'll find yourself having a lot easier time when you're working on stuff. Those extra couple of steps can add up after a while. And if you got one of these things, use it, especially if you're into the mech mod side. If you're into mech mods, if you're into hybrids, if you're doing that kind of stuff, if you're working on stuff that's below 0.5 ohms, you really need to have one of these things. Seriously, you need to have a good, accurate ohm meter because you need to know what's going on. You need to also be able to find out what the resistance of your complete circuit is. Not just the resistance of your atomizer, but the connections between them have resistances. You need to figure those in when you do your calculations. That's where this comes in. Because with the little tool that goes on here, you can plug your, uh, your mod in here, put your atomizer into the 510 connector, and it will tell you what your complete system resistance is. So you can figure it out from there. You can work out your, your figures to find out if you're going to be within the safe limits of your battery. Yeah, this thing's got a lot of pieces. So having said all of that, I've already waffled on here for about nine minutes going on 10 minutes. So I'm just gonna chop out of here and wish all of you folks a very happy day. Um, enjoy your weekend. Yes, I'm doing this on Sunday. So have yourself a good weekend. By the time you see this, the weekend will be over. So have yourself good, a, a good weekend next weekend. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, I'm still very tired. I have not been feeling good the last couple of days. So please excuse me. Ladies and gentlemen, take care. God bless. May the, may the good Lord hold you in the hollow of his hand. May the wind be ever at your back. May the road rise to meet you. And may you be in heaven a half an hour before the devil knows you're dead. Take care.